Hey guys, a while back I made a video for National History Day on the Manhattan Project for a school history project. And I know it's more history oriented, but it does definitely have some science in it. So I figured I'd put it out there for you guys who are interested. Now don't worry, I still have a bunch of other really fun and cool science videos coming out soon. But I hope you guys enjoy this for now. On August 6th, 1945, a United States B-29 bomber dropped the first atomic bomb on the Japanese city of Hiroshima, claiming 90,000 Japanese lives. This so-called little boy bomb had just changed the world forever. While this bomb was so devastating, it allowed the United States to defeat Japan and end World War II, thrusting the world into the nuclear era. In 1938, Nuclear fission was first discovered in Berlin, Germany by physicists Fritz Strassmann, Lise Meitner, and Otto Hahn. Nuclear bombs work on the principle of nuclear fission. In the case of uranium-235, an atom is hit with a single neutron. This creates uranium-236, which is highly unstable. This causes it to break up into barium, krypton, and more importantly, three extra neutrons. These extra neutrons strike other uranium-235 atoms, making a chain reaction that produces huge amounts of energy. Leo Szilard, an American physicist, was worried that this technology could be used to make powerful weapons. At the same time, Germany had a plentiful amount of uranium and many very capable scientists. Szilard was worried that they would try to manufacture a weapon of mass destruction using these resources. With the help of famed physicist Albert Einstein, he sent a letter to President Roosevelt warning him of this danger and outlining a path for an American victory in the war. Niels Bohr, another famed physicist, claimed, it can never be done unless you turn the United States into one huge factory. So that's exactly what they did. Roosevelt agreed to explore the idea of nuclear weapons and start the Manhattan Project, which would ultimately cost $2 billion, which translates to $22 billion in today's money. This included the employment of over 120,000 American workers and the construction of many sites. This project would show a huge triumph in history, all while maintaining secrecy. In its six-year existence, countless innovations and ideas had to be explored in order to make this bomb as the brightest minds in the nation worked together to overcome issues and make the project successful. During this process, everything from nuclear reactors to uranium enrichment or even detonators for the bomb had to be made from scratch. The Manhattan Project was assigned to the Army Corps of Engineers by President Roosevelt, with Brigadier General Leslie Groves in charge, along with civilian Robert Oppenheimer as the director of Los Alamos. Los Alamos was the main assembly site for the bomb, one of three main locations. The main headquarters was in Washington, D.C., where General Groves directed the operation. Then, uranium enrichment took place in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. This uranium enrichment was one of the main challenges of the project. It had been found that only the uranium-235 isotope was suitable for a fission bond. Mm -hmm. That is present in natural uranium to the extent of less than 1%. So the problem is to separate uranium-235 from uranium-238, and there are various methods that could do that, and the one that I worked on at Oak Ridge was uh, electromagnetic separation, and these required a material, a compound of uranium called uranium tetrachloride, which could then be guided through a magnetic field and separated mass spectrometrically. Another method of enrichment was known as gaseous diffusion. It took place in the giant U-shaped K-25 plant at Oak Ridge. This building measured half a mile long and a thousand feet wide, covering two million square feet. It was the biggest building at the time, and here you can see it compared to the Pentagon or even Central Park. This huge building was needed for gaseous diffusion as the uranium needed to be sent through many filters in order to get the ideal purity. The next step in the project was converting enriched uranium-235 into a formidable weapon. In the bomb, about 40% of the uranium is loaded into the front, with the other 60% in the back as a projectile. This projectile is then launched forward with high explosives, starting the chain reaction known as fission. In the case of the Little Boy bomb, this released 14.5 kilotons of force, equivalent to 32 million sticks of dynamite, enough to level the entire city of Hiroshima. 
Even though only 1.5% of the uranium is used in fission, the explosion carries away the rest as nuclear fallout. The first nuclear bomb, nicknamed Gadget, was detonated on July 16, 1945 in the Trinity Test. This plutonium implosion type bomb, like the Fat Man detonated in Nagasaki, changed the world. Here are Robert Oppenheimer's thoughts on this test. We knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty. And to impress him, takes on his multi-armed form and says, now I am become death. On August 6, 1945, the Little Boy bomb is loaded onto a B-29 bomber dubbed the Enola Gay on the island of Tinian. At 2.45 a.m., the plane, loaded with the most destructive device known to man, took off for Hiroshima, piloted by Colonel Paul Tibbets. At 9.09, Hiroshima came into the sights of navigator Theodore Van Kirks. At 9.15, Little Boy was dropped, and 43 seconds later, the bomb detonated, instantly killing 90,000 people, incinerating buildings, and knocking streets off the map. 70,000 out of 76,000 total buildings in the city were damaged or destroyed in the blast. Three days later, on August 9th, Fat Man, the plutonium implosion type bomb, was dropped on Nagasaki, killing 74,000 more. Fifteen days later, even though the Japanese vowed to fight to a bitter end, they surrendered. However, this was not the end of the suffering. In the months after the bombings, thousands more died of radiation sickness caused by the nuclear fallout. But did the triumph at the end of the war outweigh the tragedy of human suffering? There was a decision that had to be made by President of the United States as to what to do. I think that he made the right decision. It shortened the war. There was terrible suffering in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Invading the mainland of Japan would have met with very fierce resistance. And it is estimated that perhaps the United States would have suffered a million casualties. The uh, Japanese were not going to surrender, in my opinion. They were determined. Some disagree with Dr. Gruen and claim that the tragedy of nuclear weapons should never be released under any circumstances. They make the point that they cause too much unnecessary human suffering. However, today, nuclear energy is used for good as a clean alternative power source. The same nuclear fission once used to destroy two Japanese cities is now being used to power countless cities around the world. While eight countries still possess nuclear weapons, 30 countries use nuclear power as an eco-friendly alternative to fossil fuels. The heat released in nuclear fission is used to generate steam that powers turbines, creating affordable and safe electricity. Although the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were major tragedies in history, it allowed for triumph as an excruciating war came to an end. Nuclear weapons should never be used again in warfare. It's not even a last resort. It should not be done. 